And this is the British Muslim Heritage Center. The British Muslim Heritage Center. In Manchester that we're about to visit. This is the day, the day. This is the day, this is the day. Here, what's called the House of Wisdom. You often hear the common ignorant statements of people who just don't know. And that's why we have a big job ahead of us to help educate the people. And it's it's a shame that people utter such foolishness that what did Muslims contribute to the world? And I'm at the House of Wisdom, and I really encourage our brothers and sisters of humanity to visit one of these or do your research. And we have we're gonna go through some of the things that Muslims who were living Islam, how Islam encouraged all of these thinking and pondering and reflecting and led them to form what we're going to see here in the House of Wisdom. Let's take a look. All right, let's go through the, this is the Welcome to the House of Wisdom exhibition at the Muslim Heritage Center. So we're starting here with cleanliness. Talk to us about this. Why is this important? Why do you have this up here? So this exhibition highlights the contribution of Muslim, uh, Muslim civilization in, uh, in, the, uh, in areas of science, medicine, um, and things that have contributed to uh, civilization around the world. So for this one, it was actually Al-Razi who came up with the first recipe for soap. And then also... First recipe for soap yes. from this Muslim al-Razi. This yes. is how important cleanliness is in Islam. I heard back then people weren't even taking baths. Yeah. I heard the French, they came up with the perfume to put over a person who wasn't even taking a bath. To, that, mask, the to mask the stench. Is this correct? Uh, this, a French man was telling me this. Even on here, now we're going even to perfume. Okay. So perfume is something which is very important in Islam. Uh, it was one of the things loved by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So um, this is just to highlight um, the importance of perfume. All right, that's after you clean yourself, you wash yourself. That's how important it is we cover that. Yes. Let's keep on moving to, oh, carpets. You got carpets up here. Yeah. Why do you have carpets up so here? So the Talk quality of design by the Muslims in the carpets was so popular that even royalty in Europe, they wanted to have carpets made by Muslims. For example, uh, Queen Eleanor, um, she wanted one and others. Here we have um, some of the artifacts that we have. And the rarest artifacts in the exhibition is here. We have a key of the Kaaba from 1910. And also we have some coins. Um, the coin in the middle is um, actually from 95 AH, 95 after Hijri. Mm -hmm. so That's literally a key from the Kaaba? From 1910. How do they, they verify that? That's for sure? This was from a private collector. Yeah. Um, because um, what wow. used to happen was back in the day, uh -huh. the cloth of the Kaaba and the key of the Kaaba used to be made in Egypt and uh -huh. then transported through the Middle Eastern yeah. um, countries. Uh, I wanted to mention this, this coin here is 85 years after the uh, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, passed away, was minted. Yeah. So this is from the time of the Umayyad Caliphate. So moving on. Giving so you guys a quick perfumes. tour of the House of Wisdom. These are perfume bottles that people used to carry uh, perfumes in back in the day. These are pen cases from uh, 1818. Okay, moving along here. So we have now architecture. Yeah, so many buildings in Europe, which are iconic buildings, actually took uh, much of the style uh, of the building from Islamic architecture. Mm -hmm. And you have all this here, a brief history explained, right? Yes. Okay, moving along. Then you have... Calligraphy. We have calligraphy. Many people know about that. Yes, let's move on. Oh, coffee. If you're a coffee lover, yes. and I'm sure most of you are, what does that have to do with Islam? So the word coffee is actually derived from the Italian term uh, cafe, which it itself is derived from the Turkish word kahve, which comes from the Arabic word kahwa. Okay. We've got school so, are you food. saying? Are we saying that? Look, did Muslims invent coffee? Yeah, it was actually an Arab goat herder named Khalid, uh, who came up. He what he discovered was that his goats 
um, they became lively after they ate a particular red berry. Yeah. So then he then took those those berries, took the seeds, boiled it, and then came up with coffee. Wow. So next time you are gonna bash Muslims in Islam, think about the coffee you're drinking there, and have a second thought to look more into it. Get educated. Let's go on. And schools. What is this? So schooling first appeared in the Masajids um, as early as the seventh century. Um, so this explains and highlights that how it then from, it started from the Masajids and then came up to the universities. The first university in the world was actually uh, started by a Muslim lady called Fatima Al Fihri in Morocco. Yeah, this is known Fatima yeah. Al Fitri. So many, for many people who say that Islam subjugates women, keeps them uneducated, the first university in the world yeah. was started by a Muslim woman. How yeah. many people knew that? And you guys going through this, you can go ahead and pause whatever you're watching it on and read through the rest that we're bringing you. So many famous philosophers, writers, uh, um, travel to the Middle East to study from uh, Islamic at Islamic universities. Mm. This is this coin, uh, this panel here is the most interesting one for me personally. The golden coin. The golden coin. The King of England in 785. His name was King Offa. He was the King of Mercy in England. We're going back 1,200 years now, 1,300 years. He had gold coins minted, with the uh, testimony of the Shahada inscribed onto the coins. Why did he have the Shahada on there? So there's a difference of opinion why. There's about two, three different theories of why he did that. Um, the original coins are in the British Museum. So as you can see, Offa, that's his name. And that's with the, the, the Kalima on there. Wow. On the reverse of the coin as well. Do some say he accepted Islam possibly? But that's one theory. That's one theory and yeah. he just come out? Okay, algebra. Algebra. What do you have to say about that? And I mean, now if you can, if people point to the modern day gadgets that they have that we wouldn't yeah. have them yeah. iPhone, computer, all of this stuff yeah. because the algorithms, right? Yeah. All of the codes come from what the yes. Muslims invented. Yes. Is that right? Alge yes, algebra. So again, before you start bashing Islam, look at the contributions that it made motivating Muslims to come up and invent. These are all Muslim inventions. Yes, right? yes. Al Kindi, he was uh, one of the pioneers in cryptography. And you know, from that, um, people use that for uh, codes uh, during um, in, in wars, sending mm -hmm. um, uh, cryptic codes and so on. Astronomy. Uh, he was the first Muslim to construct um, astrolobes, it was Al Fazari. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Are these things where people can obviously verify, go check up yes. and do research? Do you have a, w a website that... Yes, the website. Uh, these, are, these are stuff that you can actually look up and research into more detail. Yeah. And the people can, you know, we each just, one of these panels, it can be an exhibition by itself. Medicine and treatment. This is when you had real healing medicine. Yeah. We're not talking about today where we're just masking the symptoms. These were actually healers, yeah. really healing For example, Ibn Sina... He wrote a text which was used uh, across Europe and the Islamic world. And many of the doctors and surgeons used to travel to the Muslim world to study with the Muslim Here's doctors. a big one, hospitals. Yes. Yes. So in the time of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam, you could see the first hospital service was established in the courtyard of the Prophet's mosque in Medina. Uh -huh. And then the first organized hospital in the world was the Ahmad ibn uh, Tulan Hospital in Cairo from 872. Wow, you have all these contributions that Islam made. Why don't most of the world know about this? Yes. Here, it was uh, Umar bin Khattab who ordered the construction of the first windmill. Windmills, in, in even the, I didn't know about this one. In windmills. The Muslim world, yeah. In, uh, so it was Umar bin Khattab. He ordered the first construction of the first windmill in the Muslim world. It wasn't until 500 years later yeah. that when some of the Crusades returned to Europe that they started building windmills in Europe. We got clocks. You guys are just getting a taste here. Clocks. Islamic civilization accredited. Look at this. Telling the time. So optics and f 
So the ancient Greeks, they used to have the belief that our, how we see is because our eyes emit rays. But it was Ibn al-Haytham, uh, a Muslim mathematician, astronomer, and physicist who came up with the idea that it's actually uh, due to the light um, uh, hitting objects that we can see. And he invented the first pinhole camera as well. Wow. Paper mills. So this is, so you can write on, obviously, right? Paper? Yeah. It says the first paper was not established in Christian Europe until 1293. And then what's this one? So Muhammad al-Adrisi, he produced uh, many works and he, he, he made a huge um, globe uh, on f uh, made out of 400 kilograms of silver, mm -hmm. which recorded the continents, the trade routes, the lakes, the rivers, the major cities, the plains, and so on. All right, guys, this is the House of Wisdom. Can anybody come and visit? Yes, it's open seven days a week. So uh, anybody, the not yet Muslims, people who are sick of being lied to, had the wool pull over their eyes, they are intelligent, they want to get more informed, come to the House of Wisdom here in Manchester the British Muslim Heritage at Center. the British Muslim Heritage Center. British Muslim Heritage Center in Manchester, UK. Now, if somebody wants to come in and visit, uh, uh, what, do, what do you, exactly do you guys do here? Well, we have an open door policy. Open door, it's not closed, you hear that? Mm. Open door policy for everyone, mm. whether Muslim or non-Muslim, anyone, really. And I saw the exhibition that you have, yeah. all the Muslim contributions that, to the world. Yes, absolutely. And not only contribution to the world, but also contribution of Muslims in First World and Second World War. Amazing. Yes. And uh, this well, is something all is interesting is that very few people actually know about it, even in Britain, who was at the heart of this whole issue, but uh, only 2% of the people actually know the contribution of the Muslims. So it's often said that, you know, uh, what you're doing here, why you're here, etc. What they don't understand is the whole freedom you're enjoying, they also give their blood before this as well. Wow, that's deep. Yeah. The freedom that you enjoy, did you hear that? Mashallah. So this is, this is uh, exactly the, the whole idea of this particular project for the British Muslim Heritage Center was uh, after 9-11, there was a, a stigma attached to the Muslim community and there was a lot of negativity in the media, negativity amongst the non-Muslims in Europe and America. And we came, there are some people like Brother Abdul Khan, myself and others came together and we, we thought we need to do something about it. Although it might be in a small way, but we need to have a, we have to, contribute toward that problem. I think what's amazing about this center is that this is a <coughs> heritage building. It's a great two-star listed building, which has got amazing history to Britain itself. As a Muslim community who are part and parcel of Britain, they also bought this, preserved this, returned it to its original form, and they are now building this as a heritage for the Muslims as well, and a center where we can have community relations strengthened, where we can link up with the different countries as well, so reach out, because at the end of the day, we live in a global village. We only have one humanity, one world. We all have a responsibility to take a step towards one another. The door's open. Come and visit Manchester, right? Yes, Manchester, yeah.